is a tutorial on how to loom knit a sweater poncho. And this is what it looks like. You're going to need a 150 peg loom in the half gauge and a 60 peg loom in the half gauge and the Cindy Wood looms. I'm using three skeins. It pretty much takes three skeins exactly of the Lions Brand Scarfy yarn. You'll need a looming hook and a crafter's needle. Go ahead and cast on 30 pegs and then you're going to do a rib stitch for 15 rows. And I would start with the black peg because it moves easier if you do the outer edge on the cuff. So after you do that much, you're going to cast on 58 pegs. And you're just going to e-wrap 58 pegs and this is going to extend into the poncho area now and now you're going to e-wrap 88 pegs which will put you back at your original starting point And then you're going to go in and toss your bottom loops over on all those pegs. So go ahead and pause the video and complete that much. And now you're going to cast on 58 pegs, which should be on the other side of the S as you can see now you're going to e-wrap 146 pegs and you're going to do this for a total of 20 rows and this is the bottom of one half of your poncho so we're doing one panel but both panels are exactly the same so after you see this one done, which is really easy, you can do the other one exactly the same. There's nothing different about them. Okay, now you're going to go in and toss all your loops over, and you're going to continue this straight flat knitting for a total of 20 rows where you e-wrap 146 pegs for 20 rows. This is what it should look like. It will roll a little, it's okay. You can do a crochet edging if you want at the end, but there's your cuff and there's your sides on either side of your cuff. At this point we're going to start decreasing and start getting down to the point where our neckline is going to be. So we're going to decrease by one on each end and for now the ends are very close together so that's pretty easy and after you decrease by one on each end you're just going to ear up all the pegs and at this point that should be 144 so go ahead and ear up 144 pegs Toss the bottom loops over, both loops on the decreased pegs. So you're going to toss both of them over. You're going to toss the rest over all the way around. Let's go ahead and pause the video and complete your 20 row, I mean complete that row. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go in and you're going to just e-wrap a row. No decreasing, no nothing, you're just going to e-wrap a row, which should be 144 pegs. You're going to go in and you're going to repeat these last two rows until you're down to 64 pegs. So every other row is a decrease by one on each end. And then you're going to um, e-wrap a row, e wrap a regular row in between. So this is what you should have and this is what you should be down to to be to 64 and now we're going to do an internal decrease and what you're doing is you're taking every other stitch 
and you are moving it to the next peg. That means when every when everything's done, you should have two stitches on every other peg, and every other peg should be empty. This is an internal decrease to get you prepped to do your neckline. This is the most complicated part of the pattern. But once you get past this, it's it's easy. So most of this pattern is really easy. This is the most complicated part, and it's because you can drop a stitch. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your working yarn and you're going to e-wrap only the pegs with stitches on it. Don't e-wrap any, pe any pegs that don't have any stitches. So only the pegs with stitches, which means you're only e-wrapping every other peg. As you can see, only every other peg is wrapped. You're going to toss both loops over on all those pegs. I only like to use internal decreasing if I'm only going to have to do it once. So you have to do it once with each side. Now you're going to need your stitch holder. I suggest you start on the inside first, on that inside curve first. That way when you go to do the outer edge it's a little easier. You're going to take each stitch off and place it onto the stitch holder and you're going to do that with all 32 stitches as I said this is kind of the challenging part getting the stitches on the stitch holder and then getting the stitches onto the other loom to do the turtleneck area. But when, if you can get that much, that's the most complicated part. It's, it doesn't, I find it doesn't take that long. Now once you get all your stitches on, you will need to cut your working yarn because you're not taking it through the top of the loom, you're taking it through the bottom. As you can see, I'm taking it through the bottom. So I'd cut you at least a good six inch to um, 10 inch tail, as you can see there. Okay, now I'm gonna get my, um, my 60 peg loom. And as you can see, I've already done my other half and I've already placed my stitches on the loom. Make sure that the right side is facing out and the wrong side is facing in. Now keep in mind we're going to be overlapping by two stitches. So as you can see, I'm pulling up my stitches from the inside of the loom and placing them onto the pegs. I'm going to overlap by two stitches on each side. And the reason I overlap is because when you go in and you start um, doing the turtleneck area, it's very helpful um, and not having a big space. So that's the reason why I choose to overlap my stitches. The first couple, getting them on, will be a little bit of a challenge, and then it just goes on smoothly after that. Now normally when I do an internal decrease, I tighten my stitches, but I didn't do it with this one. And it didn't make that much of a difference on this one, but we're not creating a snout or anything. We're just creating a garment. So it worked fine not having to tighten the stitches. Okay, 
Now we're going to start our rib stitch, but because where we overlapped, we're going to be starting two over, but our actual starting point is going to be the white peg. So go ahead and e-wrap one, purl one all the way around, and this is your rib stitch. And you're going to do this rib stitch for 50 rows, and then you're going to bind off. I would suggest a stretchier bind off. I personally use Luma Hat's bind off video that she put up recently. I found that it works really great for stuff like this. It's not too stretchy, but it's stretchy enough that um, it, it still has a really nice tasteful finish. And I'll post a link to that below in the box info box below the video. And there I'm, I'm taking back on those overlaps. So keep going. E wrap pearl, e wrap pearl. For 50 rows and bind off then you're going to need to go in and sew up your front section and your back section make sure you unroll it completely and get those very edges and I would suggest sewing from the neck down You'll need to do the front and the back side, and then you need to sew up your cuffs. So you're going to sew up your cuffs, and then you're done. That's it. That's all it takes to make this.